Hey everyone, so today I decided to try out Lurk in this meta. It's been quite a while since I tried it out last time, but I was considering bringing it if I play in Seasonals, and so I needed to see how it would do. Lurk is sort of um, a simple deck, I guess. I mean, there are some nuances and stuff like that, and there's technically some like wrong things you can do with this deck, but it's one of those decks that is just pretty baseline powerful, and so if you suck at the deck, you're still going to get some wins just by the straight up raw power of your units. But if you do put the time in to learn this deck, it probably will be worth your while, especially in the right meta. Yeah, so this deck revolves around this Lurk keyword. What Lurk means is that whenever you make an attack, by the way, you don't have to attack with the Lurk unit to trigger this. You can attack with any unit. But there's a card on top of your deck with a Lurk keyword. You can increase the attack of all of your Lurk units by one. And that's like everywhere in your entire deck. And then Rek'Sai is one of the main champions of the deck. So when he's actually on your deck, you actually lurk twice. Instead of just once, you get plus two attack everywhere on all your units. And also when Rek'Sai attacks, you also get a bonus plus one added to everything. And you can also only lurk once per turn. So theoretically, the most you could get in one turn would be plus three. So if Rek'Sai attacks and there's another Rek'Sai on top of your deck, then her attack would give you plus one to everything. And then because Rek'Sai is on top of the deck, you get an extra plus two everywhere. And if she gets played to the field and can't attack with 10 plus power, like if she's stunned or just doesn't meet the threshold of 10 plus power, you'll actually get put back into your deck at the round end. But once you've attacked with 10 plus power, you level up and then she becomes overwhelmed and she'll have some crazy stats and a good amount of health and do a crap load of damage. And she also gives you three different lurk cards into your hand, so it kind of refills your hand. And yeah, one of the ways you're going to be ending the game. Then you have Pike. So Pike's like my favorite champion in this deck. Whenever this card is on top of your deck and you lurk into it, you transform it into death from below, and then it becomes a 4 mana fast speed spell that deals his attack damage to a unit and then summons him. So it's incredibly powerful. And then once all allied pikes have dealt 15 plus damage, he levels up, and then every single time he strikes after that, if he kills a unit, he starts like a chain and starts killing the weakest unit over and over again, and potentially killing the whole board. And what's also pretty crazy is that if the strike actually puts him to the 15 damage or more, it'll immediately level up and start the chain. Like, he doesn't have to be already leveled up and then strike. But yeah, so this is a very threatening card. Once you get to, like, 7 to 10 damage dealt with Pike, and you just hover this card in your hand, it's super powerful because you're just threatening to wipe his entire board. Yeah, so the deck kind of builds itself. There's not much you can do with the deck. There used to be sort of other ways to build it until Zolt one trick this. He's got like rank one multiple times in North America with this deck. And so he sort of like set the standard for how the deck has to be played. You basically only have like one flexible slot in my opinion that you can really do anything with. And I did switch it up for this video but we'll get to that in a second. Yeah so for the most part you have to run these one drops. You have two one drop lurkers. Sharkling the one two. Hatchling one one but has fearsome. If you have the choice obviously play Sharkling if the enemy can play like one damage pings you need to be able to make sure that you can attack if you miss lurks in this deck it can be really punishing and then because if you attack on turn one it's so important to lurk you need to have another one drop in my opinion and treasure seeker is just like the best one drop because it also gives you this waking sands which is a two mana slow speed spell that summons you a five to ephemeral and the crazy thing about that ephemeral is so let's say sometimes early on your units aren't able to attack because they'll just get a good trade maybe you play a treasure seeker on the first turn but because you need to lurk on turn two you can then summon the Waking Sands, let's say. And now you can attack with the Waking Sands to trigger your Lurk and not have to have one of your other units die before it's like increases its attack to actually get like equal trades. And it's also really good in combination with this next card, the Redfin Hammer Snout. This is a two mana card, but when you play it, you grant an enemy vulnerable. And so if they have like a really important target to kill, let's say like for example, Misfortune, she's a 3-3. Three, three. Let's say they're playing Scouts, they may have a Sharp Sight to protect her. Well, if you make her vulnerable, and then attack her with the Waking Sands, then you, you guarantee kill her even through Sharp Sight. And so it's just really good value. Like heavily increases the chances you can lurk on turn one. And the Waking Sands is just nuts. The other thing is that sometimes because it's ephemeral, they don't actually want to block it. But if you do five damage to them, it just makes it so much easier. You're going to be able to finish them off late game with a lot of your Overwhelm cards like Rek'Sai. Going to answer another important card. Good stat line, two, three. A lot of times it can attack for you on turn two and not die because of the three health. And then predicting is really powerful in this deck, obviously, because you want to try to predict into Pike or Rek'Sai, because once you put them to the top of the deck, that's when you get their powerful bonuses. It's a super important card. By the way, 
when you're predicting cards, you should try not to do it on defense. It's pretty bad to do it on defense because you're not able to actually trigger the bonus of putting that card on top of your deck. Unless you're like on turn four or something and you were like aspiring Chronomancer into this Snapchat Swarm we'll get to in a second. But for the most part, if you're predicting on defense, you're probably doing something wrong. Obviously it's situational, but that's just a good tip to keep in mind. Now the Snapchat Swarm I was mentioning is a 0-2 card. But once you start getting these lurks, it starts getting bigger, obviously. And then when you play it, you start a free attack. And so it can help trigger your lurks even on defense and really kind of start snowballing the game. Then we have Zerkside Caller. It's a three drop, so it has a bit better stats by default. And then when you play, you predict. Same thing as Chronomancer. This is really good if you're attacking on turn three. It's a bit chunkier with health and it can try to predict you into your Pike or Rek'Sai, preferably. Then we have Zerksa Wrath, five drop. But once it attacks with eight plus power, you give it Fearsome, Overwhelm, and Spell Shield this round, so it's really crazy and you really want to try to get it up to this 8 power threshold, and it's a really strong card. What's kind of funny is that, like, when you compare it to the Dune Breaker, um, I think it's just way better. <laughs> like, you get Fearsome and Spell Shield out of this card, and you do have one less attack, but this one is one extra mana, and <laughs> it just gives it one extra damage, and all it has is Overwhelm. It's still worthwhile to run it. You want to be running a lot of Lurk cards, so you don't really miss Lurk that much. But yeah, these two cards can just really help put in a lot of damage with Overwhelm, combined with Rek'Sai. And then Jawfish is another way to close out the game. It's a turn 8 play, but what happens is once you play it, each Lurker ally strikes a random enemy. And so it's another potential board wipe like Pike. The other thing to keep in mind with this card is that a lot of times people play Lurk as just like this crazy like bum rush aggro deck, which it can be for sure a lot of the time. But again, keep in mind that you don't have to just be sending in like kind of bad attacks, taking bad trades. You can slow play it. You will start ramping up, you will get like really good stats, and keeping your units alive for a Jawfish play can be really devastating for the opponent. So as for the spells, you basically just have like the Pike spell, and then you're on this Call the Pack card. So to play it, you put a card from your hand on top of your deck and create two random lurkers in hand. So it can help refill you, as well as put your champions on top of your deck. So let's say you naturally draw into your champions, or like from your mulligan, right? And so yeah, if you get these cards in your hand, it's honestly kind of bad. You don't really want Rek'Sai in your hand until pretty late into the game when you can actually level up. Sorry, she. <laughs> and then also Pike, you can just play it sometimes in the right matchup, but for the most part, you're going to want it to be that spell. And so Call the Pack really helps put those champions back on top of the deck. You get an attack, you get the bonus, you turn Pike into the death from below, or trigger the Rek'Sai bonus and, and lurk twice. And it also counts as a lurk card itself, so it helps your odds and to not miss lurk. But basically the only flexible spot is this Ruthless Predator. So I usually don't use this card that much, but it is one of the most obvious cards to run in this deck. It has some good synergy with it. You give an ally plus two attack and give an enemy vulnerable. So sometimes this can help you end the game by making like a weak target vulnerable, something with like a really low amount of health, and then using one of your overwhelm units to drag it and kill them that way. Also obviously you can use the vulnerable to remove important targets, but giving the ally plus two attack is pretty strong. It can help level Rek'Sai at an earlier turn. So keep in mind that when Rek'Sai attacks, you're going to get plus one attack. Hopefully if you lurk, you're also going to get one extra attack. So if you have a Ruthless Predator, you can attack with a Rek'Sai that only has six attack. So that means if you only lurk three different times, or if you've lurked into Rek'Sai one of those times, and that's how you got it into your hand, then you basically only have to lurk twice. And so this can help to level Rek'Sai insanely fast. The other cool thing is this um, Xerxes Wrath, right? So it gets the bonus, Fearsome, and Spell Shield. If it gets the eight plus power, it's kind of the same thing, you're probably going to lurk, but if you're at like 5, you can put the Ruthless onto it, give it the Fearsome and Spell Shield and Overwhelm. And technically you can even use it with Pike. So for example, sometimes if you're about to level up Pike, they'll just not block it, if they don't have to, if they're not going to die obviously. Because if it doesn't actually kill something, it doesn't get to trigger its board wipe. But if you make something vulnerable with this, and increase the Pike's attack possibly to like the range where he will level up, then you can guarantee drag something, guarantee that he strikes something, and then do the board wipe. The other card to consider is this blood bait. I think this is what Zalt uses himself instead of Ruthless Predator. The good thing about this is that it is a lurk card itself. The Ruthless Predator is not actually lurk. So this technically increases the chance that you'll miss lurk by a little bit by running this card. So if you're missing lurk a lot and it's like to this card, then yeah, maybe <laughs> then yeah, maybe you put in the blood bait. And I don't really like this card that much, although it is good. So the main way you use this is that when you Play Blood Bait, you create a Snapjaw Swarm on top of your deck, right? Which is this card that lets you do a free attack. These cards are not bad, it helps you level up on defensive turns like I said. So having an extra one into your deck is not bad. And the main way you're going to want to combo this 
is after you lurk a Rek'Sai. So you're going to want to save one mana. And if you predict into a Rek'Sai with like Chronomancer or Caller, or you just get lucky and natural it. After you hit Rek'Sai, you're going to play a Bloodbait. Put this Snapjaw Swarm on top of your deck. So the next turn you draw the Snapjaw. And now on defense you can play it to trigger Rek'Sai bonus again. And it can really help to like snowball the game out of control and like turbo level you. So it is like a high roll combo. I just felt like from only having one in the deck and I barely ever seemed to like be able to hit Rek'Sai. It just seemed like whenever I do hit Rek'Sai, I don't have it in my hand. And if I don't do the combo, it doesn't feel that strong of a card. So I personally would think I'd prefer like a Ruthless Predator. But my actual favorite to run is this Bone Skewer card. So this Bone Skewer card is an ally strikes an enemy, then moves to the top of your deck. This is actually Pike's spell. Like his actual champion spell, not the death from below thing, once you lurk with him. Because I usually tend to hit Pike more than Rek'Sai, it seems like. And I really like Pike, he's really fun. He's really good against a lot of decks, I think. Being able to just wipe the whole board and threaten it. So this kind of just helps, like, threaten his level up even faster. If you play, like, the Pike spell, for example, um, technically you can even Bone Skewer before the attack. If you Bone Skewer, get an extra strike with, with the Pike. He goes back on top of your deck. If you haven't triggered Lurk already that turn, you can then Lurk. And then get the death from below spell again and then usually that will make it so you can board wipe really good against a lot of like swarmy decks i think that sort of turbo levels pike yeah so you can basically run ruthless blood bait or bone skewer in my opinion but the rest of it is kind of has to be kept the same again general tips try not to predict on defensive turns i usually keep chronomancer if i'm attacking on turn two i only really keep snapjaw swarm if i have a one drop and i'm attacking on turn like one and three if you're attacking on evens, then this doesn't always feel that good in my opinion. Same with the Zergside Caller, I'd probably only keep it if you do have a 1-drop and you're attacking on turn 1 and 3. Usually you're kicking your champs out of your hand because you're going to want to natural them or predict into them. Unless, for some reason, you think like Pike is your only way to win the game in a certain matchup, and you also have like a call to pack, then potentially you could do that to like guarantee you put Pike on top of your deck and get the death from below spell. But for the most part, in my opinion, you're kicking your champs. Looking for your early cards. Yeah, I think that's all there really is to say about the deck. If you have more questions, then let me know. Um, but yeah, I want to thank you guys for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, I'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe. Maybe even like the video, it would really help me out. And as always, if you want to see me play anything in the near future, you can leave a comment below. I make a Runeterra video every single day, so the extra ideas are definitely useful. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks. some puff caps okay we don't attack on turn one unlucky we do attack on turn two though we have the predict on turn two which is pretty good don't really like to top take a pike unless we get a call the pack oh we just kind of call the pack that's funny okay hopefully no thermo beam thermomo beam but the good news is that at least now we can't kill this thing, so we guarantee Lurk next turn, which is the most important thing. Guess we get the, um... One drop? It's a little bit too risky to skip, I think. We have to at least Lurk, like, once or twice. Before you can start going for some risky skips. We actually still have a lot of cards in the deck that are not, um, did he does that reshuffle the deck? No. See what I've learned? <laughs> Why did he pick that one? Um, actually, I probably shouldn't have took that damage. I just realized how low we were. Already leveled? So now it's a bit scary.
Um, yeah, this is not very good. He plants more puff caps. We can easily just lose. But I can't like not attack here. How did he level up? Oh, he leveled up that fast because entrapment. Dude, entrapment out of this one drop was actually so crazy. Like it helped him level so fast. Also, we have um a lot of flash bombs on our cards, which is scary. You're just not good to predict on um on defense. But I feel like I kinda have to in this situation. If he's not gonna attack, I'm gonna pike him. Okay. This is looking kind of sketchy. The only good news is that um, we have another pike now next turn. You know, we lurked on defense and it's kind of awkward. We can uh, put a pike in our hand. Why oh, just attack? Oh my god. Okay, I guess I should have developed. I did not think this would be the play. Wait, we win? <laughs> Wait, I didn't even know that we won right there. <laughs> Wait, we had so much damage. <laughs> I did not know we'd be killing him right there. What the hell? <laughs> Man, this deck is just has too much damage in it. What the hell? Dude, that actually surprised me. <laughs> Is Lulu. I mean, like, this guarantees I get a pike, and, like, I'm so unlucky drawing them that maybe I just do this. But then, I mean, like... There's so many ways for him to just, like, buff up my, um... The chompers. And then... I'm down. Fuck it. This, you probably shouldn't do this, by the way. In your games. I mean, I guess we'll see. But generally, that's pretty silly play. You'd rather just predict into it. Never blind Rek'Sai, sad. Dude's thinking. Got some elite options. I think that means it's celestial. Probably the stun. It's also be equinox. Equinox and stun are both really good. What the hell? Got me a pike. He kind of knows I have pike as well because I use call the pack and it's not a Rek'Sai. Is this a mystic right here? Nice. Burn away from my face. I think these are the celestials, right? Celestial, epic, follower. Unless it shows left to my left to right as well.
It should be enough, right? To kill it. Um, have another pike. Oh, that's so good. Okay, so we predicted into Rek'Sai, which means we should be able to Rek'Sai level Rek'Sai next attack, because it'll be at 7, plus this, and then plus it, yeah, so it's guaranteed level next attack. And our pike will be at 6 attack, he'll do 6 next, so he'll only need 5 more, nice, so he'll level next strike as well. Attack like this. And then, um... Any next time he bone skewer, it'll be a it'll be a board wipe, and a Rexai levels up next turn. Let's see, get, let's see, get excited is this. I think I do this, because then it saves this Pike, um, and puts this one back in the deck. Okay. The board's even again. Also, so I draw Pike and then Rek'Sai again, right? Well, that's the only thing awkward about that play is that now I... Hello! Anyone want to join my party? I'm glad he didn't attack with that. I mean, he, he mean, it didn't really matter. Um, but like, I wouldn't have blocked. I would have just attacked. I think we can play this one because he knows we have this one. And then now the cool thing is we get to, uh, ruthless this. Vulnerable that, so Pike will drag that. I smell that wasn't pretty either. Do you miss Lurk? But they we missed Lurk, wow. But thankfully like the Rex side by itself is enough to give us the um attack. The cool thing too is that this works. Pike actually hits this. Kills everything, and then that means he can't block this. He needs another get excited. Wow. I mean, if that's gonna happen, maybe I should have dragged this then to kill the Yordle Captain. But I mean, if he ever develops anything, we just dollfish and he. He's like kind of screwed. Actually, Jawfish isn't even amazing. We could get pretty unlucky, Jawfish. I'm kind of scared. Damn, that like his double good X side there was so huge. I mean, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, okay. He's gonna say you buffed the elusive for sure. Wow, I mean, he got rid of double get excited, so we actually might be fine. Actually, we do this, right? So he can't have another whimsy in his hand. That's kind of irrelevant now. We don't want him to have a second Lulu and like whimsy one of these things.
I'll also just play this. I'm usually again, it's usually bad to lurk on defense, but might as well just uh. I don't want to beat whatever woke you. Might as well. See, he did have another Lulu. He would have whimsied some, like he would have whimsied this thing. And he wouldn't have the overwhelm. I think we win here though. Are you ready? <laughs> I think it's the stun landmark that's pretty annoying, but yeah, we're chilling. We're chilling. That's a GG. Let's go. Scouts, too easy. Actually, I think Scouts has a chance. But we can still win this. Hit the one drop. The vulnerable is going to be good for like Quinn and uh, MF. So they can't just sit in the back row forever if they don't drop Pike. Hopefully they pass here. Unlucky. Have to take two here. Could just drag it. I think this is better. The Rek'Sai is too lit. Hoping he didn't have the barrier unit. The Bright Soul Protector, that would suck. Although he could just be planning on sharp sighting. This. Alright, we're good. Could be a um, Blinding Assault next turn. Yeah, it could be a blinding assault. I hit him with this. I was hoping we hit a pike. Yeah, blinding assault. You got the nuts. The nuts draw. And and I've dude, I don't know why I can't attack on turn one like on like, as like lurk player. The good news is that I should be able to kill this, um, misfortune next turn. Um, I don't know if I'm supposed to drag it with this. No, no, this should be able to beat, um, sharp sight. Pike, 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 noise. We can always rely on you to keep us safe. It's too easy. Every way is a path. He's mad, he's mad. Hello there. Pike if he plays Quinn as well. No one cares about this little stinky unit. favors the bold. The ocean is no place for the weak. And now he can't even really attack, right? Because if he attacks... <laughs> if he attacks, um... Then we can just like level this dude up. Uh, technically we're one off. But I still don't think he... Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. He like opened up with like the best you could, I'm pretty sure. In like most matchups. All we gotta do is lurk in the pike. Another Timo Caitlin. Shrooms are popping up. What the hell? Get out of here. Okay, looks more like it. How can this happen so much, man? God damn it! Is that possible? Is that possible?
fucking knew it too, dude. I fucking had a feeling, but I was like, no way. I was like, there's no way. I kind of want to don't even don't even want to predict and just see what the fuck is on top of my deck and just see if it's another non-lurk card. So then I like guarantee lose. They're actually so bad I have to skip. But dude, if I don't hit lurk here. I don't have my emote. Oh, thank you. We yordles in uniform do like a wump. We yordles in uniform do like a wump. And Timo, shut up. I'm getting smoked because I freaking can't hit lurk. Oh, please. <laughs> Don't do this. Find your own. Oh, 40 shrooms. Oh, okay. Okay. We're chilling. We are chilling. What could possibly go? I need Pike. I need to lurk into Pike right here. If I don't lurk into Pike, it's fucking ogre. If he puts like 80 shrooms in my deck. Dude, that took so long to register the lurk. I thought I fucking missed it again. Bruh. Just leave me alone! Just let it go through! What is it? It's just a measly 17 damage. <laughs> oh? See, if I didn't miss Lurk, he couldn't do that to me. He, could, he couldn't do this to me. Oh yeah, he could, actually. I'm only, the only Lurk... Oh yeah, he could, he could. Fair enough. Fair enough, sir. Love the smell of mushrooms in the morning. Love the smell of mushrooms in the morning. You. There's only 88 shrooms. When you think about it. Like when you think about it. There's only 88 shrooms. Sir, sir, this is not necessary. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I guess sometimes that happens <laughs> when you're playing Lyric. Shivana Pantheon. Shivana Pantheon. Um. Pike's so important, but we don't really need it till later on when it's like a bigger thing, I guess. Go get the shiny dump. Um Let's see what we get. Nothing. Honorable might be good though. I don't have that many units. Hope he doesn't have, um... Chain vest? Yeah, we're chilling. He probably has the 3 drop now. 
But as long as we keep, uh... As long as we keep our shits growing, might be chilling. He should gem this, yeah, yeah. I guess we'll just keep like blocking shit until eventually it dies. We're gonna send this into it right now so he has to protect it this turn. Hopefully he doesn't have the barrier. If he has a barrier, we're big sad. Single combat? Yeah, yeah, single combat. But hopefully it still dies. This. Because it'll kill for three. Sharp sight and then single. Oh, you can't. Okay. We're getting pretty weak though. Oh, but our hand actually sucks ass. It's so bad. How bad is it? Fire and Very. Burn in me. End them. Ooh, he doesn't have a uh, protection. No protection. Boom, we're sending the big one at him. The big fucking beetle. We're sending Beetle Guy after him. Don't do it! Don't you dare! Oh wait, isn't this fine? Level Shivana. Now I take to the sky! <laughs> nice Shivana. I'm happy for you. Is that a pike? I didn't notice. He's dead. Too easy. It's too easy. I actually didn't think he was going to die there. <laughs> but that's the power of Lurk. Alright, Zoe, Diana, a soul. Some early cards. I'm down with that. Dark side's awkward. If we get a call the pack though, we're chilling. I think I'd rather. Oh, I should play this. I was thinking like I should play. If I had to choose between these two, I'd rather play this in case he has a group shot. Um, but this would just play around that anyways. Predict into. Oh, let's take a call the pack so we can get a Rex eye later. Counts as a lurk this turn and it can enable us to get Rek'Sai. You can't really pass, I don't think, this turn. Then we just burn his mana and pass back. Do we actually want to spend spell mana next turn? Discoveries await below. I think we're going to put the pressure on. Ah, uh, technically, I should call the pack first. I mean, it lets them know what we're doing, but then we can possibly get some better draws. Like letting him know what we're doing doesn't really matter, right? Like, yeah, it doesn't mean anything. The 
probably has a pokey. He has at least a pokey for this. But we still gotta play it. We tried to try to wait. We hit Rek'Sai, he can't block these, but he will be able to pokey one of them, or group shot and pokey, which would suck. Double group shot. Ah, that kind of sucks. But we still have one, it's the same thing, it's kind of not developing, I guess, right? I assume this is a pokey then. I, I also think he's gonna block this one with this, and then probably block this one with one of these two, yeah. Pokey this. Alright, so he's countered my attack pretty well. Did get a lot of damage in though. And this shouldn't be able to attack ever now. Although I'm kind of scared of what he can do with it now. Now everything he plays is kind of kind of a big boy now. Daylight warms the heart and lights the way. Oh, that's actually really cute. Embrace the night. Night descends. Face your heretic. Really? Okay. Yeah, that's a really cute play. Being able to play these for free and buff them up with uh captain. I want to make him spend some mana before I play Pike. Cause I wanted to get like many more for something. I feel like this is okay. Normally you wouldn't really want to do this, but like you want to save it for defense or something. Yeah, it's, I'm, I mean, I was hoping he would spend some mana there. I'm gonna have to do this though. Because he could just um, drag it with Dana next turn. Like if he didn't have Diana, I would actually say it's better to not do that because you want to be able to jawfish with it later. But he just can kill it for free potentially. That's crazy that we missed Lurk as well there. I really need Pike. Easy does it. My research. Mother yeah, see, he would have been able to get Nightfall and then, um, <laughs> and then drag, uh, drag our thing, killing it for free. So I guess he's going in to go into Eclipse Dragon, which is kind of scary for our Rek'Sai. I think he's like guaranteed to draw Eclipse Dragon. With that, I can't, I don't I don't think that only runs like Aesol and Eclipse Dragon, right? I hit Lurk here, level up. On a Pike, unlucky. Also, the good news is that we drew um, some more units. We actually play two different units here. Probably more scared of the elusive at this point now. Get into probably another Rex if we can. Or another Predict is good. For our next attack after this. But we could play Aesil here, but then we're going to Jawfish. And it won't be um Whatever the cost. Oh okay. Yeah, you can't really play um, Aesol here, I feel like. Like, technically you can. But, um... 
Oh, both these are hitting that. So if he group shots and something else, keeps one alive. Okay. And you can technically still ASOL. Um, I guess that that works. The thing though is that, like we can drag this with um, Zerg side Dune Breaker. Also, we hit Lurk, so he can't even really block these with with uh, Aesol, or else he'll die. What I'm really scared about is him getting like that that thing. Okay, but that's fine. That's fine. We win. Yeah, you have to block with Aesol, kill Aesol, and we do the overwhelm damage. Nice. Oh, pretty clean. Oh, fine. Dragons, nice. Pretty sure we're supposed to counter dragons. So we better freaking counter them. Oh no. Sometimes I keep Snapjaw Swarm, but not if we're attacking on two. I feel like it's kind of a bad keep. Yeah, we got both our champions in our hand for no reason. Why is that thing honking in my ear? Like, please. It could go wide, but I think that. Oh my god. Predict another predict is probably fine. Nice. Wait, no, you can play Shivana next turn. That's not nice. Oh, he's not playing that. Okay, let's go wide. Let's go wide as hell. Oh, I forgot he can play that. Frick. <laughs> I forgot he can play the white flame. I was thinking of Shivana. Give me a pike. Okay, well, vulnerable maybe is fine. Dragon blood is must hot. The blood boil half dragon. We're sending it. We're just sending everything. I how it kind of ascends, except for this thing. This thing should be here. Hey, knock it off with all this thinking. And get to the passing. All clean. Our time is over. This blocks one of these. Vana blocks this, this one. Yep. End. We push 10 damage. Is it probably a single maybe here? But the thing is, I don't think you can. Like, there's such big units that you can't single anything great. Like, maybe this thing? They have a little bit of health? Come face me. Ivana will level, which is kind of scary. Like once you want to level, it starts getting kind of out of hand, and so he got—he's kind of lucky with that dragon chow, and like these strikes that I can't really avoid. I can't really pass. I can't make his attorney for like a jawfish to be able to pass and stuff. I really just needed to have pike. Because now it's like sus.
He is really low on health. But, um. Yeah. Block this. Well, I had two. We barely lurked. Now if he has to, if he wants to do this on it, like he can't do anything. He can like kill that dragon, I guess, if he wants. Getting him kind of low. Can't play that yet. I gotta play Pike. Um, I think we had drag with Pike though, because if we drag with this, he could like possibly survive. It's like a sharp set or something like that. I feel like this is a bit harder for him to survive. Like single this. Oh hush. Plus two. Wait, what? Okay. I mean that could have been way worse, right? Um, hope he doesn't have that big. Yep, that one. We can trade with it with this. Nice. He doesn't have sharp, but he would have used it last turn. I think honestly we let it go through. Cause we want we want this to be able to overwhelm, and uh, we hit him with the dollfish. This is not enough unless we hit a Rexai, which I can't, obviously can't count on. We do this. Both are dead, and hopefully we win right here. His play needs to be, so we're hitting, him, we're hitting this with both of these things. If he like singles this. And then plays like Aesol or something. I don't know. I think we're chilling. Can't really imagine what he could do here. Yeah, Aesol's definitely not it, I don't think. Blocks one, singles one, still win, yeah. Let's go. Yeah, this deck counters dragons pretty hard. Ravana Pantheon, Ravana Aesol.